Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to feature my best VR graphics guide, which is a settings tutorial for the Quest 2 headset. This video is intended to be a reference guide for all Quest 2 users out there. And my advice to you is to follow my settings, but bear in mind that I am running an RTX 3080 with an i9 10900K processor. Therefore, if your system isn't quite as high spec, you can always use my settings as a starting point and you can work your way to your sweet spot from there. I really hope this guide helps following the Hotfix 2 update. I also want to remind you that these are my personal preferences in terms of settings. Some people go for higher graphics, some people go for better performance. So you may disagree with some of the settings that I'm using, but these are my personal preferences as I prefer to have a really smooth and responsive experience as well as good graphics. So it's all about striking a balance between performance and visuals. I'll go through the settings in detail and try to explain how each one impacts the performance I'm getting. And hopefully this will help you understand how and why I use each setting the way I do. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the PC settings. Here you can see I've got the game mode turned off, HAGS is turned off, as well as variable refresh rate. I'm using NVIDIA driver 471.68, and here are my NVIDIA 3D settings. Make sure you select the Microsoft Flight Simulator as the program to customize, and you can follow my settings here. I have experimented with all different types of combinations here, but I find that these exact settings are giving me the best performance and visuals so far. Next, let's have a look at the Oculus settings. In the Oculus app, I have the graphics preferences set to 120Hz refresh rate with a render resolution of 4704 by 2384 which is 1.5 times the render resolution. I've experimented with all different types of render resolutions in combination with different types of refresh rates. And for some reason, this is the best result I'm getting. I don't quite understand how I'm getting such a good result using 120 Hertz when I'm getting frames of around 35 to 40 FPS. However, this setting seems to be the best for me. So I recommend you give it a go. If you have problems with resolution, just knock that down a bit. I do recommend you spend some time on these settings and experiment with the different combinations. Also, please note that I am using the most updated software for the Oculus Quest 2. I always use the link cable as I find it much more reliable than the virtual desktop and the AirLink, as I find it's the best and most reliable way to connect the headset. Here you can see I'm using the Oculus Debug tool. Here I've kept everything as default, apart from the asynchronous space warp, which I've disabled. I find the sim performs much better with this setting disabled, as it stops any artifacts, and it gives a much better performance overall. And the main reason why I haven't changed any of these settings is because these mostly default settings give me the most balanced performance in terms of graphics and performance in VR. Based on your system and performance, you may want to experiment changing the FOV tangent multiplier, which can have a significant impact on the FPS. I recommend experimenting with these numbers, starting at 0.0, .0 as the default, and working your way up to about 0.9, and just see how your VR performs using these different settings. I can't guarantee it will lock you in perfectly, however, it's worth a try. I did use this setting when I had my 2060 Super six months ago, and it seemed to do the trick, so hopefully it'll help you too. What the FOV setting is, is a pair of numbers that shows how large a part of the display is actually utilized, both horizontally and vertically. So again, have a go at messing around with this setting and see if it helps improve performance. The next thing we're going to look at is increasing virtual memory. This is specifically aimed at people who have less than 32 gigabytes of RAM in their computer. This may help reduce crash to desktops. So it might be worth trying out if you do have less than 32 gigabytes of RAM. So what you need to do first is go to the search tool in Windows and type view advanced settings. And under the advanced tab, you click settings, and next you click the advanced tab and make sure you click on background services under processor scheduling. The next thing you need to do is customize your virtual memory use. Here you're going to increase it. First of all, unclick automatically manage paging file size for all drives and then go ahead and click on C drive and then custom size. So depending on how much RAM you have, this is where you type in the equivalent in megabytes. So for 16 gigabytes of RAM, it'll be 16,384. Once you've done that, you click OK and restart your computer and see how it performs. And for whatever reason you want to change it back again, you just go back through the same process and set them back to the defaults. Next, let's look at all those important SIM VR settings. Here, my main objective is to get a balanced performance in the headset. So everything should be responsive, but also look good as well. These are my most reliable VR settings. Notice how I set the render scaling at 90. This gives me a little bit of headroom off 100, and it seems to work the best with my resolution set in the Oculus Quest 2. Anti-lasing is set to TAA. Terrain level of detail is set to 130. The terrain vector detail is set to ultra. The buildings are set to high. The trees are set to medium. The grass and bushes are set to medium. The object levels of detail are set to 130. 
Volumetric clouds are set to high. Texture resolution is set to ultra. Anisotropic filtering is set to 16 times. Texture supersampling is set to 8 times 8. Texture synthesis is set to ultra. Water waves are set to high. Shadow maps are set to 1536. Terrain shadows 1024. Contact shadows ultra. Windshield effects high. Ambient occlusion is low. Reflections are high. Light shafts are medium. Bloom is off. And glass cockpit refresh rate is set to high. So these are my exact settings for the most balanced performance I can get from the Quest 2. As mentioned earlier, my preferences really are to get a good performance. You could push these all to ultra and then even the render to 100, but you might be getting slight stutters and micro stutters, especially when you're flying close to the ground. So these are the best settings for me. So please try these and see how you go and just scale them up and down depending on what kind of performance you're getting. Next up, we've got the VR traffic settings. Here I've got my aircraft traffic type set to real time online. I have the traffic nameplates turned off just because I find them distracting. Airport life is all set at 95 and land and sea traffic is all set at 100. The reason why I have these settings so high is because I feel the world feels much more alive with these settings in action. However, if you've got a slower internet connection, it's definitely worth turning these right down because it does take up extra bandwidth. I have both AI and multiplayer generic planes turned off with ultra traffic variety. In my opinion, these settings just help to make it a little bit more realistic, but are in no way essential. And lastly, we have the VR data settings. Here I have the online functionality turned on, Bing Data World Graphics is on, Photogrammetry is on, Live Real World Air Traffic is on, Live Weather is turned on, and Multiplayer is turned on. You can see my current data consumption is 4.45 gigs. Data tracking reset day set to one. Data limitation is set to off. Data bandwidth usage limit is unlimited and my rolling cache is turned on with a limit of 25 gigabytes. Next up is a demo flight showcasing the performance I'm getting with these VR settings. I won't be displaying the FPS here, but I was consistently getting 35 to 40 frames per second with a frame time of around 22 milliseconds. I have said this recently quite a few times, but I'm really impressed with the way the Quest 2 performs in this sim now. It's been getting more and more reliable over these past few months, and it really is a joy to use. I'm still experiencing different issues in the headset in terms of anti-aliasing since the update and I will be making some more videos about these kind of issues soon. Quite a few people have mentioned this pink band that goes across the bottom of the screen in the Quest 2. I've not experienced that so I'm not sure how to help troubleshoot that but I'm sure there are some other YouTube videos out there that kind of help resolve those problems. Anyway guys I'll leave you with this demo running for a few minutes. I hope you found this video useful in terms of setting up your Quest 2 and getting it running to the best you can in terms of your system's capability. Anyway guys, as always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content and I look forward to making more videos for you soon. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.